like to welcome you all to the Thursday, December 5th um, regular meeting of the Berlin Select Board. To my left is Flo Smith. To my right is Jeremy Hansen, Angelina Caprin. I'm Brad Town, and our, with us also is Dana Hadley. Um, additions or changes to the agenda there? I have one addition. I'm expecting Carla. Nuisel and Phil Gentili to come in. They've been working on a job description for the proposed position that they're working on. Um, I'm expecting them to come in to speak with you. That's the only addition. Okay. Um, public comment. <laughs> Here she is. Hearing none. Uh, can I say something? Weird? Sure. Some public. Do you need me for anything for the select meeting? Mm, not that I can see. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Good evening. Yep. Okay. Um, tax sale schedule. There is one property left on the tax sale list that Diane has. Um, it is scheduled for the sale of December 12th. Um, it is for a property at 982 Payne Turnpike South. Um, I provided the board with pictures of the property. And if you remember last year, and Flo won't remember this, um, however, um, we decided that when we have a tax sale, we'd give the select board a little background on the property. Um, this is an interesting property because the person that is, it's owned by an estate. Both the um, parties are deceased. Um, they have a son who's been living there. He's been unable to pay the taxes. Mm -hmm. It's been on this list for a number of years. And the property itself is in poor condition. Um, we bring it to you. We always want your advice whether you want the town to bid on this. Um, in this case, I wouldn't recommend that you bid on this. Um, and it would sure be nice if someone did. I didn't notice what the taxes were. What are the annual taxes? On the um, right now, the taxes owed, I know, are $8,600. $8, and I think the annual is maybe $1,500 in mm -hmm. that range. Mm -hmm. So unless I hear that you no. want no, me to bid on it. I think we can pass over. OK. Yes. Great. Unless you want to move the town office over there. Oh, well, you know, maybe I'd have a view of the pond. <laughs> I'm going to go with no. Yeah, okay. And there goes that dream right down the tube. <laughs> no fishing on yeah, the launch. No. Do you want me to go on, Brad, to the next item? Yeah, uh, the loan documents for the highway truck. Right. This was the, um, these are the loan documents for the new highway truck. This is, these are items that you have previously voted on. Um, last time, if you remember, we had a question whether the interest rate would remain the same, and it did uh, at 2.05% with Community National Bank. And it's, uh, the borrowing is $150,000 for a, I should know this right off the top of my head, but I don't, so bear with me while I search for it. I believe this is a five-year loan. It is. And it is a $30,000 payment annually. So I guess- How much? 31,000. 31,000. 31, 31, right. Yeah. Um, so I guess I'm asking for a motion from the board uh, and accepting the highway note from Community National Bank at 2.05% in the amount of $150,000 for a period of 
five years, and I'm looking for board signatures. And also, I mean, so it's the, the next bit there, the non-arbitrage and use of proceeds certificate. Also, we're going to sign that too. It's as part of the same. Yes. The same transaction. That's, yes, because and actually, there's another resolution that needs to be signed as well. Yes. Okay, so I think I'm going to try to do this all at once. Uh, I move that we accept the approve the highway equipment note, the non-arbitrage and use of proceeds certificate for highway equipment borrowing and the um, Town of Berlin resolution about highway equipment borrowing as presented. And I second the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. Um, Just if I could have signatures on those, please. And Approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. Thank you. Move to approve general fund accounts payable warrant number 20G10 with checks 19779 through 19822 in the amount of $149,376.04. Also, payroll warrant number 20-11 for payroll from November 10th, 2019 through November 23rd, 2019 in the amount of $44,097.47. I second the motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Um, now we come to the Berlin Volunteer Fire Department. Come on down. Feel free to I had emailed you the budget as I was I was out yesterday, so unfortunately I didn't see the email until today. Um, but I did make copies which I will give you, I think. So if you'd like to take one of those, Angel, and pass it forward, please. two pieces here. So I, I do have two pieces um, and we, we could look at what I would say to be the front page but I'm not sure if you all have that. You do. Okay. You so the first one is the I think page. you need it. Okay. okay. Do you not have a flow? I don't think so. Yeah. All right. Very good. I okay. do now. Okay. It was a popular page. <laughs> So this kind of gives you uh, the brief overview of the different expenditures and of the income um, of the of the budget. Um, as you can see, we have a, an expenditure difference this year of twenty thousand eight hundred fifty dollars from the previous year. Um, last year being three hundred thirty one four hundred, and this year being three hundred fifty two two fifty. Um, that is an uh, increase of the 5.92 percent in the expenditures. Um, and one of the one of the things on the income, which in the previous years, uh, you see that there is uh, zero in the previous budget surplus. Um, the last few years, we've been deadening the pain, if you want to call it, with any of the extra. But what happens is. Um, last year, let's just say, last year we put in 20000 
but at the same time we're trying to put we're putting twenty thousand into a truck replacement, which just a, a few meetings ago possibly there was a discussion on on the trucks and what we're trying to do with those. Um, so we actually I show, I'm just showing that it's there and it's in the zero state. Um, if you were to for the actual budget and the line items we have broke down. Um, we can kind of skip over the income portion um, and just going down through, starting at the bottom of the first page, the administration, um, the accounting is, is staying the same. Batchelder is still doing the accounting. We have um, an audit that is wrapping up currently. Um, there is a few differences, the increase in the software that we use for reporting. Um, there's a couple different modules that are coming out that are going to be very beneficial. So that you see a 10% increase there. Um, the hazmat line item, which wasn't there previous year, um, we found that it was needed to be there to take care of what has been used so we can replenish. Um, and if you go to the next page, the insurance. Insurance is going to be one of those things that is out of our control. Um, we're looking at a 5% increase there. Um, the next down is benefits. Now, this is where you're going to see a $10,000 increase with the stipend. The stipend is what is given to the responders for time served. Um, it was started back in, I believe, 2001 and has never changed. Um, these, these are people who are getting up at 3 o'clock in the morning, staying all hours of the day during windstorms or snowstorms, and actually going out and at times purchasing their, their meals to be eaten there at the station. Um, we, we did a breakdown on that, and, and honestly, um, it's costing your volunteers. And, and I think we see that in the number of volunteers that we actually have. I don't necessarily see, think that is one of those reasons why we don't have a whole lot of volunteers, but that is, you know, a possible reason for it. Um, so we, we felt, um, felt like it was time to do an increase to uh, compensate the guys and, and girls that are there. The How many people does that involve? That involves just under 20 people, or just over. Mm -hmm. plus or so, minus. Yeah, with a very number of hours responding for each. Right. Sure. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's all. So someone keeps track of yes. the hours. Yeah. So um, if you were to go to a, go to a fire call of any sort, um, you're going to get a point. I see. And a point is good for two hours. So you know, at the end of the year, depending on how many points somebody made you know, uh, accumulate, and that could be volunteer time, on the different calls that we go on, it could be meetings, they all get thrown into the, the mm -hmm. pot, per se, and at that time, you would then determine how much a point may, cup, may be of a value. Um, I've seen times where it's been um, $1.17 a point, and that's for two hours of your time. Um, not much for compensation. The original idea on the on the plan was that every time somebody responds to the station, they're using their vehicle and they're burning their sure. own gas. Yeah. And Makes sense. there was supposed to be incentive here for people to come up and work on special projects or uh, participate in meetings and participate in trainings and that sort of stuff. And every time they do that, come to the station again, they're burning gas and using mm -hmm. their vehicles and, as Joe said, yeah. eating meals. Yeah. And so the idea was to come up with a compensation plan to help alleviate some of that pain, give them a bonus, a benefit, and and do it in such a way that if we had a lot of events in a year, if we were on an hourly salary, we would blow our budget. You know, if we'd be here other right. areas where they have a busy season and their budget is completely thrown out. Mm -hmm. So we started off with a dollar, a ten thousand dollar figure, earn the points. The things they do are supposed to take longer than filling out the form to get the point. Mm -hmm. you know, it was based on hours and whatnot to earn their points. And then tally it up, divide it up into the 10,000, and, and 
pay it out. Mm -hmm. But as they said, over the number of years it's been in place, we think we're due for an upgrade. Yeah. We, we did a quick analysis during the budget and found that the 10000 we had wasn't even paying for gas to get up and back. So. And I, I think if you if you looked at the hours that everybody puts in there and you paid each person minimum wage for those hours, I think you're looking at 30 or 40 times this amount. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. yeah. By far. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No hard yet from me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the stipend tax right below it, it going up at 58% is just to cover the, the taxes that that's the payroll tax. That's the payroll yeah. tax. Yeah. Um, going down through um, the utilities, uh, virtually all staying the same. Um, and the communication, again, dispatch services, um, that increase of only 3%, thank God. I do believe last year was 7. It was 9 last nine year. 9 last year. Who should um, dispatch through? Through Montpelier. Yeah. Capital? Capital. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so moving down through to the buildings, um, again, this is kind of a kind of a tough one to uh, foresee what's going to happen with the price of fuel and such. Um, but if you looked at FY19 of just over 17,000 spent when we only budgeted 13, um, you, you can see that you know 18 is it's, uh, I think at this point is uh, still a kind of conservative number. Let's hope. Um, moving down towards trucks, the truck fuel um, for years been kind of dropping it down to what is getting to be maybe more, more or less realistic. But at the same time, we have to keep in mind that it's a number of responders and number of trucks going out. Um, you have six guys responding. They can all respond in one vehicle. You have more than that. You probably have two going out. And when we have an alarm activation in the commercial zone, you need to have two vehicles going out. You need, a, you know, your tower truck needs to go out there, big lots, there's a big deal. We're going on the roof every time we're down there. Um, that's been a hot topic in the last few weeks, big lots mm -hmm. has. Um, and then going, so that one was decreased by $2,000, but your vehicle repair, you see, has gone up 7%. This is due to our aged fleet. Um, you know, when we look back at 2000, or yeah, FY19, um, we blew that out by a little over $2,000. And, you know, this year we're getting awful close to that number already of the 28000 that we have budgeted for FY20. Um, again, that's due to the aged fleet. Um, so down at the, the training and education, we did increase the EMS training portion. We're having, uh, we're having some young people coming in and they want, to, they want to be as active in the EMS, the fast quad, as they are in the, um, the fire side. And to keep these people in the department, um, I feel the need to, to offer that training. Um, and, and again, $2,000 will hardly put three people through that course. Um, in last year, we did put three people mm -hmm. through that course. Um, so moving on, gear, gear is staying, staying the same um, with an increase of uh, what is the uniform line item. Um, virtually, that's just your, your hats and t-shirts and such as that, what we may be wearing for apparel right now. Um, we haven't purchased uh, much. In fact, we didn't purchase any in 2019, where this year we are making a purchase. Um, just made it actually the other night. Um, moving down to our equipment, uh, again, we, we decreased uh, the equipment maintenance um, based off some of the historical data that we've had um, and down through the only other difference would be the miscellaneous. Um, and if we looked at FY19, we, FY19, we were probably our first year with bachelors doing the accounting 
Um, I think that was part of some, some growing pains and uh, marking the appropriate line item that it should be, you know, put to. So, I mean, I would not... Transition. It was, yeah. it was a transition yeah. thing. Um, I don't necessarily think that, you know, a thousand dollars in miscellaneous is, is quite appropriate, but that's what it, what it ended up being. Mm -hmm. um, your, your miscellaneous typically would be, you know, births or deaths in the, in the department of some sort, and you may be sending flowers or a gift of some sort for, you know, people with mm -hmm. new babies. Very small item. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, deserved, I think. Yeah. New baby. We're <laughs> <laughs> done with that. <laughs> um, so I don't know if you have any questions. How is the audit? How is it going? Is it? Uh, you said it was almost done. It's almost done. Um, just sent off a uh, list of inventory which was requested, and we went kind of <laughs> round and round on. Um, the volunteer hours. Mm -hmm. um, what they want to define as, um, let's see, a professional service such as um, accounting or, uh, you know, lawyer fees of some mm -hmm. sort, in kind hours yeah. is really what it is. And I said, in my, my experience in the past, if I don't. Um, if I don't have one of my members mow the lawn, I have to then, you know, uh, go out and seek that service. Mm -hmm. Those are in, as much as in kind service as it is somebody looking over the books. Yeah. Um, so what you would probably have seen in the past of over four thousand hours, if I go by the definition of, of um, the accountant who's doing the audit, mm -hmm. you'll probably see a couple hundred hours at best. And, and I'm fighting her on that because each and every one of us puts in many hours, um, over 4,000 hours in a year. And I think it's well deserved to be recognized. So she's not putting it in, I'm, what did I miss? She's not, she's she's not, not believing what you're telling She's me? not, uh, <laughs> um, I should say, they are not accounting for just volunteer hours, mm -hmm. but more of a professional service that would have been provided. I see. Yeah. So in other words, like if it was someone donating time to uh, do the accounting or someone donating time to be a lawyer type Correct. thing. Correct. Right. But as far, what you're saying is the volunteer work that your department is doing. So keeping up the station and maintaining the For the, the benefit of the... Correct. That's, the, that's not hours that she's counting towards those. Right. Mm -hmm. So I don't necessarily know if I'm going to win the battle, but I do want to make, I do want to state that. You're not. <laughs> I'm not going to win the battle, I know this. <laughs> but you know better. Yeah. That doesn't mean you're not going to be determined. <laughs> <laughs> to a point. You know, sorry, I couldn't help it. No. It's, it's, kind, of, it's kind of a challenging subject when to be a qualified firefighter, we are supposed to be a certified firefighter, and yet we are coming and doing this without being paid hourly. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a professional service for no kind of volunteer? I would, I would agree with you, but I, I, I'm not an accountant either. So. One question I've always <laughs> had is, what if there were savings from paying bachelor to do your accounting, as opposed to Diane here at the town doing the accounting, and whether that savings could go into what you just said, Nick, in terms of paying you folks for your services? It seems to me that that's a lot of money to pay for the accounting when you folks are. You also got to re realize that that's accounting and and the audit. And the audit, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. And we would still have to have an audit regardless of, of who did the, mm -hmm. the bookkeeping. What portion um, of that is the audit? Would the you audit say? was five thousand, was it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, five thousand. Mm -hmm. um, so this has been spoke um, spoke about at different meetings. Um, this is the, the last December, at the end of December will be the end of our contract with Batch Elders. Um, so I have, once I'm done with the budget, moving on to the R an RFP to be sent out in the next week. Um, again, 
Those are my in-kind hours. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, and Batchelor just does know that that's coming up. Mm -hmm. um, and, a, and I have been mentioning that I would like to sit down maybe with Diane and Dana to um, see what that possibility might be. Mm -hmm. um, again, that, that's a, a, I don't know, a, a topic of which some people have concern with. Okay. Um, and I noticed the FY19 actuals are 10890 and the proposed is 20000 So is part of that increase also the, just the cost going up in terms of um, how much it costs? Yes. Yeah, okay. So you're going to be asking the town's warrant article for, um, sorry, 308-818. And does that increase what you guys get for a stipend? That is, that is just showing the, the increase to the stipend and the decrease of the previous year's budget. Um, of the previous budget surplus. Of the previous budget surplus. Right. Oh. We, that increases our stipend from 10000 to 20000 in that 308 number. Okay. I mean, if I had my way, you guys would be paid. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. I'd say the same thing. Mm -hmm. In fact, if I could get your accounting to the ten thousand eight ninety, that would compensate the increase in the ten thousand to your stipend, and that's where I'm coming from. And that's the only reason that I mentioned uh -huh. the actuals versus the proposed. In the best of. We, I have talked to Joe a little bit about the accounting, and I think that it's a it's a process that we need to talk some more about um, with Diane, and we need to have the software that we can put the right. modules. You mentioned that, that with the modules. That, you know that she could use, and also I think that there is probably some more work on your part on on your side, people that need to work on that. Yes. So, but. We're always open to discussion on that, so mm -hmm. if you need to sit down with us, mm -hmm. please let us know. Because Joe yeah. mentioned a 10% increase in the modules themselves. Oh, well, that was a different set of modules. Oh. That was for our uh, fire reporting software that we have to have. Um, that includes the national reporting that we have to do on all our calls. Okay, so. great, great, thank you. But that, <clears throat> that reporting that contributes to the, your, the insurance rates in the town, is that, is that linked to that? That if we if we ISO, do not yeah. if we do not do yeah. that reporting, ISO does not have that data available. Mm -hmm. The other thing is if we do not do that reporting, we are ineligible for federal grants. Oh. Well, that <laughs> yeah, it's always a so. You were going to talk about equipment, or is that no? That no. was uh, another subject. The the equipment. Uh, the increase in the maintenance. No, I'm sorry. I'm talking about um, fire trucks. Oh, are we looking to put an article in, oh. in, in this year's uh, warning for, for a new truck? Yeah. What is the timing that we would need to do? What are the milestones? Do you know? Yeah, you would need to have that into Rosemary by, and I don't have the date right in my head, but by the third week in January. Okay. Um, and you would need to decide if you bring it to the select board and they're going to support the warning. Mm -hmm. um, it's different than if you're asking for a petition, which would need to go to the voters and right. get, and Rosemary could tell you, um, right. 100 people, I think it is, out of the so much percentage. Bringing your first is, so yeah. as well in advance of that. that yes. we can yeah, I right. recommend going this route first. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we would want to see a couple, a couple different bids, three anyway. Uh, uh, but not, not, not bids, estimates. But, but budget estimates. Right. Yes. Similar to what was Brad, just done. But last time trip. equipment was purchased, was it done in a separate article? For the fire department, I believe it was. Yes. Yeah. It we, was. we had it warned as a separate <clears throat> yeah. The and last vehicle twice. the last vehicle we bonded was our rescue truck, and the rescue truck is a two thousand three truck. Yeah. Um, we have purchased new since then our uh, tanker was 
awarded through an AFG grant. So we only had, we paid, I think it ended up being about 15, 20%. And that percentage was taken out on a loan for our part. AFG covered the, the federal government paid for the rest of that. Uh, we were extremely lucky for that and, and the town benefited well. And then we've purchased uh, um, the tower truck and engine two, both used, both under 50,000 each. And we did our own loans on each of those two. Um, and well, we talked about the stitch situation on all those vehicles a few meetings ago, like Joe said. Um, so it's been like 17 years since we have requested a bond for a truck. Is it a bond you're requesting as well? Um, a truck and or well, that was in conjunction with a bond. A bond for the cost of the a truck. bond for the cost I of the see. truck, I which is the way that we did. That was is the way it, it was okay. done before with okay. the town. Thank you. I wasn't. Yeah, familiar. the town. The time. town bonded. I believe it was an eight-year payback mm -hmm. on the rescue. It is what the town did. Mm -hmm. I believe the reason for that is with the research done, the bond was going to give the best interest rate. Mm -hmm. I don't I'll, um, I'll need to get back to you because there are some um, requ requirements as far as public hearings and things like that. So Certainly. I'll, I'll do that. I'll look that up. If I remember I right, the rescue one was bonded over a nine-year time. Mm -hmm. and I believe we can find the write-up of the warning. Oh, we, we must have for those trucks. It, it would I would expect it would be in the town annual report for uh, two thousand and two or two. Yeah, it would be. It might have been two thousand and one because yeah, that one truck two years. That truck too. It took two years to build it. Okay. It's either two thousand and one or two thousand and two, but. It, that warning should be published in we can find the annual it. report, correct? Right? Rosemary yeah. will have it. Yeah. 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 How it was written. Yeah. And then the way Engine 1 was written would be back in 1991 in that town report. Mm -hmm. okay. Anything else? Any other questions for the fire department? If you have recommendations on our budget or think we should do something different, then part of the reason we bring it to present it to you guys. Sure. Well, I can tell you I'll be racking my brain for weeks probably trying to figure out how to get you guys more money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. so the key with the budget is obviously, and I think I tend to always try and make it as little increase as possible just yeah. because of the political part of it, but is to be realistic. and. It seems that you're realistic with your figures. Right. It does. It does feel that way. Yes. Well, it's yes. been. Yeah. I mean, obviously, the stipend's very low, and you know, sure, who wouldn't want the ATAS volunteers to have to pay for their serving him? Um, but, but thank you. There was yeah. several. Yeah, several weeks, several meetings. Um, all these figures are based off of you know historical data of five years past. Um, so we can watch the trends and, and, and make adjustments where we feel we could. Um, and I also got to give, give a lot of credit to Jerry DM and TDs who sits in on these meetings and gives, uh, asks the right questions. Mm -hmm. At times, maybe we need to rethink, you know, how we do business. Well, and so and I'm not going to break your way, but I think you've got really realistic figures and I think you've come up about them in a sensible manner. And you have to always realize that you're never going to be right. So, I mean, if you want to know that, you're good. And you bring them to us in an honorable fashion. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate it. Thank you. What, uh, what was the hourly rate you guys are getting for a stipend again? Oh, there is no hourly rate. There's not an hourly rate. Right. So, yeah. so they, they collect all their hours at the end of the year. They Divide calculate it, the yeah. 10 or 20,000 by however many hours there are, and then it goes to everybody based on how many hours they put in. Through a point system. Through yeah. a point system. So it's going to oh, be okay. what, I mean, in an okay year, if you were three to it's, six It's dollars. ranged from 35 uh, yeah. cents to $1.50 an hour okay. to us. Yeah. So when do you, when do you um, distribute it? We uh, finish up the at calendar the, year the and then the process year. it and usually send them out February or March. Mm -hmm. And that statement is taxed? Yeah, unfortunately. Yes. 
It's a dumb. It is tax. We, we tax Does 57 cents an hour. Do we, do we have a coin drop? We do a coin drop once a year. Oh, Does Berlin have any big donors? Like, for example, Norwich University in Northfield might do a lot for their town, for example. Does Berlin have any entity that we've ever we, reached we out to? We have in the past. We have uh, in the past. Yeah, and like Walmart, you know, Central Hospital. Hospital. It's part of our plan to do it again in the future. Great. Because we have reached out in the past to CDH, mm -hmm. Blue Cross Blue Shield, mm -hmm. and a few other entities, Walmart. Mm -hmm. um, and it is. And I it think is they can be somewhat generous. I mean, I think that they can be. Um, but they like to be asked. I think right. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Sure. sure. We will be doing a letter campaign. It's been going through uh, quite a few drafts. And I think what we have is. Um, what's going to be sent out? This is um, for the replacement of the three trucks in the period of sure. X number of years. Um, again, we have a 30-year truck, we have a 26-year-old truck, we have a 40-year-old truck, um, and so all these will have to be replaced at some time before we see our maintenance costs go up even higher. Mm -hmm. There's been discussion about. The charge? Do you, are you thinking of a charge for false alarms or um, things like that? And I know we have some sort of ordinance. There is an alarm ordinance. Uh, um, we are moving forward with big not, lots. Yeah. Um, currently, um, they have been. They have had technicians down there trying to remedy the situation. Was it like an automatic alarm that keeps going off? It is. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have a yeah. term for that. It's an automatic false alarm of fire. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I think that's a good term. <laughs> um, I just went to a seminar, and I, I should take a look at your ordinance because our ordinances need a lot of work in order to be legal to collect yeah. money. It's on the books here in the, with the town. It's a town ordinance. Yes. Um, I know. Yeah, we can. We should have a conversation about that offline. Right. So. Um. So one of the things that did uh, develop the last couple days is our uh, chief, uh, Jeremy Dufresne, is stepping down at the end of the month. Um, Keith Van Eiderstein, the deputy chief, is going to be stepping in to finish up the term. Um, so, thank you. Guys. You're welcome. Yes, thank you. So um, after the term is over, do you run? Is that how you we have, our elections are for the chief and the president are two year cycles, and then the uh, next one up this this May during our annual meeting is the chief's position. So you'll serve at least through May. Yes, is what, is what I'm hearing. Yeah. Yes, and then you run a hard campaign to. <laughs> yeah, I don't think going. it needs to be very hard. <laughs> <laughs> I think the transition will be quite smooth. I'm sure um, it would be. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's been started. I'm very lucky. Um, now, one of the things that probably should be uh, at least mentioned, and that we don't have to go into any great uh, depth and discussion, and I might be surprising some of my colleagues to my left, but um, the department, the department, and the town of Berlin are growing in different rates. And I do believe that that department needs to have a part-time at a minimum, I don't care if you call it a part-time chief or a part-time administrator of some sort. Um, there's a lot of hours that go into that. There's a lot of outreach that is not happening. Um, a lot of oversight on the buildings, you know, of, of the commercial uh, growth within Berlin. And I think uh, not just the department, but I believe the town is missing the boat on it. So I think that's a, a discussion that we, we need to have throughout this year. Um, and we might, I don't know, be talking about something different next. There are some benefits to the town that having staffing would be good. Um, I think there's some benefits, as you say, if the town would help out with the uh, accounting, that would benefit the town as a whole. Well, if we had staffing on the department, there are benefits that I think could help the town. I'm not sure quite now, right now, I believe our hydrants are getting shoveled out, but there's something maybe that we could pay and, and do in-house. 
Um, we have things to take care of in our own building oversight and other things of that nature. But I think there's other ways that we're paying somebody to plow. Well, if we put a plow on our pickup, we could take care of our own plowing. Mm -hmm. We could possibly take care of some other plowing on small yards as well and keep the cost in-house. There's benefits there and other things that that would put somebody in our in our station in our facility close by to help take care of some of the issues that we are having in house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I even think of applying for grants. There is a grant out there uh, called um, it's a federal grant similar to the AFG called the Safer Grant. It's for um, fire service funding, actually police too, I believe, um, for emergency services funding, where it's a five year cycle. It starts with the federal government paying for the majority of the of the payroll the first year, and then after the fifth year, it's the 100% of the payroll goes back to the yeah. organization, the municipality, or what have you. Um, the, it's intended to help staffing in this situation and help ease into it. Um, that safer period is, is it open now as well? I believe it's open, yes, December 4th to June. Yeah, that safer period applic grant application is happening as we speak. Um, are we prepared to move forward with that? Right, Obviously not right now. Um, could we could we get a plan to do it for next grant cycle? It's feasible. Is it an annual? It's an annual. Yeah. yeah. Um, that goes hand in hand with the, that AFG I talked about a couple of mm -hmm. meetings ago as well. Um, for the for vehicles and so on and so forth um, I've had conversations with a few other um, fire officers in central Vermont and their thoughts are that we would this department in this town would benefit greatly by having a paid chief be a part-time or full-time um, how that model looks right now you know we haven't gone into depth with it yet um, you know how where it's going to be funded and so on and so forth but that safer grant is a possibility to help out the funding yes it gets you gently into it it gets you yeah. gently into yeah. it mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and the town is changing a lot it is I mean, so you might have already mentioned that with the the fire truck grants and whatnot that is something else that we are applying for that right we're hoping to apply for Mm -hmm. so grant period open now. Yeah. We oh, I know. I know you're making a real effort to. Yeah. Do it. Absolutely. Yeah. But one of our other goals as well is to not only it is a letter campaign for a membership drive, mm -hmm. so that we can recruit some other volunteers. Great. What's the average age of your volunteer? You got to take me out of the mix. <laughs> yeah. Because you would. <laughs> you would. <laughs> so would I. I don't know. Thirty. Probably 25, no, 28. Harder than that, I'd say. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no. Somewhere around, I don't know. We're graying society. Probably. 89, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we do have quite a few younger members on right now, um, which is good. So, yeah. 30 may be the right age, but it does seem like the the older ones are the ones showing up pretty, pretty sure. often. Yeah. Anything else? Thank you, gentlemen, for coming in. Thank, Thank you. you. Brad, did you want to yeah, speak with Carla and Phil? Come on up. Yeah. I'm gonna sit right at the table. Ah. Do you want the good chair? No, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> so we got great news today. Oh, we got the grant. Fantastic. Oh, wow. Yeah. That is great. Yes. Um, there's, but I did want to, and I don't want to beat a dead horse or, or uh, but it does, one of the conditions is that we, they do want to, um, the note said this grant has been fully funded, but the award is conditioned on amending the work plan. Before issuing the grant agreement, we would like to discuss the work plan with you to make sure it is realistic for the 18 month time frame of the grant. So we have to work with um, Jacob at ACCD to, and I, I'm not sure what the work plan currently looks like. He's um, coming in next. 
uh, Wednesday okay. uh, at 4 p.m. Okay. And you're certainly invited. Um, Tom and I are planning to meet oh, with good. him. Oh, good. So you've already I don't. I don't think it's a huge problem that will take very much. Did, did we have a longer time frame? or, or sh um, You know, I don't even know about the time frame, yeah, but naturally yeah. we want to get it done as soon as well, we can. Well, but I think so. the, obviously there's a requirement on the, in the grant Probably. side that it be done within a certain amount of time. But Tom's been in touch with Jacob, okay. and so Jacob's... Well, and the only reason I mention it is because, again, I'm here once again to, pro to, to advocate for oh, um, really? a staff yeah. person. <laughs> and I think that um, that staff person, and I obviously they wouldn't, the grant would begin before any position would begin. But I think that having this grant really sort of um, exemplifies it or it, it makes it more important that we think about having somebody. Isn't the grant to kickstart the application process? It's to do the application. Yeah. But I think I think there's a lot of, um, and and assuming I'm not sure who we're, who's going to be hired to you know to to do sure. it as a consultant, but assuming that it's you know the one we've had in the past or one that, that acts like the one we have in the past, it may be fine, but I, I still think someone at the town level that's coordinating activities would be beneficial to that process as well as other things. And um, because I think, you know, one of the things this position would be is a project coordinator, and I think mm -hmm. keeping that person on task would be helpful. But, um, but again, I, I feel like we've, we've, we've maybe put too much emphasis on this person only being for the town center designation when I think that regardless of that this person would be valuable um, to the town you know I did I don't know if you've seen that there we did get the job description I know Dana has it but I don't know if you've seen it um, but that's the one from Burlington from Burlington yeah which 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 I looked through it and a lot of it I think although it's some of the words are different you and I talked briefly about yes. this but I wanted to sit down with you yes. and Phil I was going to call and, you yesterday and actually, kind and of um, good thing you didn't because I wasn't here oh, okay um, but so that we can kind of rewrite the job I mean this I, I don't have any problem with that job yeah. description but a lot of it is either not applicable actually I would say or, not a lot of it a yeah. small portion of it yeah. um, isn't but yes we can yeah. do that but I mean in addition to that some of the things we've talked about at the in terms of economic development when we were talking with some of the other local development entities is like keeping track of properties that are available in Berlin you know trying to trying to find actively seek tenants for or or or, or attract people to the you know businesses to the community and I think that's something else that this position could do um, but I, 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 I really think that it's, I, I just hate to, to do it too late for it to have the effect. It, if we do it sooner rather than later, I think the, the progress that we make will be exponentially greater. Whereas if we put it off too long, I feel like it's not going to have the same impact. And I'll, I'll let Phil talk because he. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I was asked to come obviously by Dan and, <clears throat> and Tom and. I guess I'm here to advocate a little bit on behalf of the Berlin Conservation Commission. And uh, whether you know it or not, you know, we're kind of reorganizing in a way. We lost four members in 2018, and we've added three new members, some of which I think still have to write a letter to... Yeah, we need to... We need to I'll formalize work, that. I'll work with but, you on that. Yeah. But it shouldn't be a problem. But, uh, you know, we're gaining some new traction, and we have some new energy, which is exciting, because for about a year, they were we were very stagnant. Uh, Angela left, and she was the uh, the heavy lifter for ten or fifteen years. Obviously, she did so much. And then uh, Cheryl Peterson left, Ellen Drysdale left, and Beth Doubt left the commission. So they left myself, my wife Ellen Sulek, and Tom Willard. And then we've added uh, two other, three other members. You know, J.C. Earl. And then we brought on uh, Sister Lorian and uh, Matthew Pollock. I who, think those are the two that the yeah. board needs to approve. Right. And yeah. Matthew, unfortunately, couldn't be here in November because of work. Yeah. So last week, it was a, no, two weeks ago, yeah. we had a meeting with the Planning Commission. So we kind of checked in with them and told them our agenda and everything. And it, it became apparent uh, to both Tom and Ellen and I, when there were just the three of us going through the lists of what we'd like to do and what the what we think the charge of the town is to the Conservation Commission and <clears throat> what we're responsible for now and what we'd like to see happen. And the list got rather long. Uh, and in doing that, after meeting with the Planning Commission, uh, 
the idea got hatched that maybe down the road, if we would get an, another administrator on board through grants and whatever, maybe point one, you know, one tenth of the time or four hours a week or something, four to eight hours a week, could be used not just on the town plan <clears throat> itself, but supplementing uh, both the Planning Commission and the Conservation Commission with some hours and time and organization and admin support. So that, that got us pretty excited. But I thought maybe what I could explain to you uh, are some of the topics that the Commission has been exploring and what our focus has been, just to give you an idea. You know, we have a laundry list of things here. And I, I just think it's interesting if you hear about where we are and what, you know, the, ta the task we think we're charged with or, I, you know, different areas of concentration we'd like to, we'd like to address. Uh, land conservation, obviously, uh, we'd like to do a town-wide inventory and mapping so the, the, the townspeople can know where the public lands are, where, where we own land, where we can walk, where we can bird watch, where we can trail ride or whatever. That's pretty important, we think. Uh, one thing that came to light with Sister Lorian, which is very interesting, and she brought up a lot of interesting issues, especially in the town plan, is make sure we address groundwater protections. I remember talking to her about that. So we want to make sure that in the town plan that's included, groundwater protections. She cited a problem over in Waitsfield where a landowner, you know, was about to do what the old, remember the Vermont, uh, uh, what were they called, in Randolph, yeah. Vermont Pure, remember up on, in, next to VTC up there? Uh, Vermont Pier, right? Large quantities they were water. withdrawing yeah. large, and the yeah. trout when you know a couple a stream dried up because you don't you know you don't know what you're affecting in a way when you're tapping like that. So that's that's an issue. Uh, we also have river access issues. We're talking about river dog river cleanup, access to the jacuzzis, trying to get to the jacuzzis safely without going on the railroad tracks, which is illegal. Uh, Tom Tom Willer is very interested in the Stevens Branch. He actually says that the, the make of the Stevens Branch and the river, I guess, has a lot of similarities to the Dog River for trout. And that even, believe it or not, even you know, behind McDonald's could be a nice <laughs> trout fishing area or access. So th those are some ideas. Uh, in the future, uh, trail planning and management, which is coordination with VAST. They'd like to consider putting a trail in. With Mumba, which we Montpelier Mountain Bike Association, we've had some issues with them cutting trails on Irish Hill that weren't allowed to connect with the state forest over on uh, Crosstown, and eventually talking with the Northfield Conservation Commission about continuing the Ridgeline Trail over all the way to Payne Mountain, the peak, and then down the old ski access to Shaw Outdoor Center. So those a lot of you know that's that's just that issue. Uh, you know, we have existing management issues that we'd like to address. We have to mow the Stewart fields. You know, we're tr we think that we should be charged or at least come up with a plan for invasive species to kind of regulate buckthorn and a couple other issues that are sprouting up. Uh, we have the town forest plans that we continue to address and manage. Uh, you know, we have Friendship Park and Dog River Nature Area, which we would like to, you know, maintain in a way and also alert our, our population that there are places to go. The year before last, uh, the, the year before last summer, uh, Corinne came up with this wonderful list. It wasn't generated by the Conservation Commission or the Recreation Commission. She did it. But it's, it's a wonderful thing that I think we should actively have the town posted in somewhere. And this is our greater central Vermont community, summer in Berlin, 2008. What's on your list to do this summer? And she has wonderful ideas, you know, concerning what to do in Berlin. That would be great uh, to continue that and support her. I mean, we are, I guess in a way, indirectly, we do have a little admin support through the town office, but it's not, you know, we're not coordinated in some way at this plan. Uh, let's see, town plan. You know, we talked the other day about the town plan and eventually developing a trail or a boardwalk trail between the school over wetlands to the mall and where the new development will be. That will be a whole project unto itself as far as figuring out how to get zoning for that and how to build things like that to make the town center plan more accessible uh, and including the school and all the land around it. Uh, the other thing we'd like to do, and I don't want to take up too much time here, but 
we thought maybe a component of the Conservation Commission would be an educational component. And so we had ideas about having Conservation Commission sponsor uh, talks, maybe at the school, on evenings, maybe just four times a year or something like that. We came up with ideas like, you know, having Roger Hill come and talk about mm -hmm. weather and, and climate chaos or change or whatever you want to call it, you know, what's been going on. Maybe having Jim, Jim I think his name is Jim Andrews or Eric Sorensen talk about uh, amphibians and reptiles and vernal pools and Brian Pfeiffer coming to talk about birds or Chip Darmstead about, you know, birding in Berlin. Uh, we've already had Audubon, Vermont, Steve Hochbach has been here and identified, you know, critical areas with the Stewart Fields going up Irish Hill and how to create habitat for birds. Uh, Berlin Pond itself, working with Fish and Wildlife and Vermont uh, Lakes Program and Refuge, you know, United States of Forest and Wildlife Services and the refuges, uh, whether Berlin Pond should be on it. You know, I said infernal pools, wildflowers, uh, other town lands, uh, you know, maybe acquiring other town lands. We, we know that there's a piece of land up on Irish Hill that is totally landlocked but has where uh, many springs come from in the, in the fens up there. And Tom Willard says it's a choice piece of property we should maybe look at purchasing. Once more, protection for the Berlin watershed and the Berlin Pond watershed. And of course, you know, always out there is at some point, how can we protect or work with uh, Henry and, and getting Turner's Falls and protecting that as a very valuable resource. And people, you know, right now we're not allowed on it, it's private property, but if you've ever seen Turner's Falls, it's one of a kind in Vermont, it's magnificent. And it's right in our backyard, but, you know, what does that mean? Eventually it might mean something. So, you know, the list is long, and there were three or four of us, and we're looking at all this and go, how do we parse this up, you know? And at this point, it seems like the best way to get traction is if someone's on the committee and has, you know, an interest or real affinity towards groundwater or mapping or land acquisition, that that's kind of the direction we're going. I think what would be really helpful is if in the long-term planning of the next year or two, if there's a new admin person added to the mix here and they could, you know, give a committee like ours, you know, two or four hours a week, that would be immense because, you know, we're all working as volunteers and you know how that is. As soon as you leave the, the meeting, it just kind of gets diluted and lost and it's, it's, it's sometimes hard. Uh, people have other lives. So I think someone to really stay on the ball and help us coordinate these things, we could get a lot more done. And I just want to add, the meeting that we had, one of the best things was just we learning what the what they're doing. Like we don't communicate enough, I think, the, among the committees because I had no idea what types of projects you know the Conservation Commission was working on, and I think it's really and I was really excited after that meeting to hear all the things that they were talking about. But I did want to say, the other thing um, that I just brought was this grant opportunity that um, I saw and it would, there were several things on your list that mm -hmm. could qualify for this grant. It's up to $200,000, it's due by January 20th. But this is just an example of something that I think the new person could help could, facilitate. Could facilitate. Is that yeah. the one the governor just uh, Just Yeah, proposed. it was in the digger yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so okay. a lot of those things, um, but you know, it's a recreation, this was last year too, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah I remember that from last year. And we yeah. just, you know, we were just looking at it going, this sounds great, but yeah. we were just like... Yeah. So I think, I mean, one of the that things point. that okay. we actually sort of, Tom and I threw around today was the pedestrian access idea and trying to maybe put a grant together to get some money for that through this um, opportunity, but... I tried to sell them this. I had a guy come in the other day trying to sell me a splash pool <laughs> because I had to have him explain what it was, but... Mm -hmm. I think I need one here. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, again, I just, um, I, I feel strongly about it. I know it's, it's a commitment, um, but I just, I, I think, it, when I think of the Planning Commission when I first started, we really, we didn't have support and we, we really didn't, weren't very productive for that reason. You know, just having that person that keeps you on track and keeps everybody um, behind the scenes and, you know, I think, I think it would really aid mm -hmm. the other committees yeah. as well. One of the thoughts I had too, Phil, when you were talking about the educational component, CVH does community meetings and they do events and 
they build it in on certain nights of the week. Mm -hmm. so you were mentioned doing it at the school, or but maybe doing it at yeah. CBH, CBH. They would mm -hmm. band with you and have, you know, mm -hmm. services and commitment right. and money. Good idea. You know, yeah, yeah. that's a great a idea. That's a, a really good role. idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. The other thing I thought about, and we floated this about a year and a half ago, I went to uh, Wayne and asked if we could put a kiosk or a board up at Maplewood to announce when her meetings were, or in general, if, if, you know, I feel like it would be helpful. I don't know if all, you know, all the committees or boards could get together and say, should, should there be something hanging somewhere? So you people know. going by would say, select board meeting, tonight at 7 o'clock, and then take it down the next day and put Conservation Commission tonight at night. You know, it's set. You know, it's six thirty somewhere. And there is a bulletin board over there. I know there is. It's against the wall. And it's not that effective. Uh, well, I. It's, I don't. I. Think. I, I it's. I don't think we have control over his where he puts it. But right. um, we do mm -hmm. post things <coughs> over there. He um, said he would be more than willing to put a kiosk or a sandwich board or something under the overhang so it doesn't. So people walking in and out. Now you don't see it from the road. The other thought I had, just dreaming, was like maybe he'd let us put, you know, like a, an old-looking colonial signpost <laughs> with you could change something on it or just hang tonight, you know? I mean, obviously someone has to do that. If it's not up to date, you look foolish. Right. Exactly. We also have to have the recorded message that they change frequently that could include other things like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think Corinne re-records that once it was at once, once a week. week. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if there's meetings or things coming up, yeah. you can just, you can yeah. like, literally right now just tell Corinne and she'll add it to right. the kind of package of the message. It's also possible the Washington World might advertise on their board for free. It's worthwhile asking. Yeah. It doesn't hurt to ask. Yeah, so they are in our the, town. Another thing, too, everybody's on Facebook, so do you have a Facebook page? No. You don't? Mm -mm. That's a great idea. Um, I'm not on Facebook. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, they have an events, right. a, yeah. events mm -hmm. section. I've used Front Porch yeah, Forum. Front Porch Forum a lot. But. To and announce things, but I, we don't get much of a response from it. A lot of events that I attend are mm -hmm. things that I find on the events. Okay. And then they, they build on upcoming events. So anyone who utilizes that will look for upcoming events and mm -hmm. find things that way, too. Yeah. yeah. It is. I, I agree with you, Bill. Social you really media. do need to get the word out somehow, mm -hmm. and there's a variety of ways you can do it. And and frankly, you're never going to be able to do it enough. Right. Um, and I'd love to have a chance to talk with you yes, and you can do that. both okay. of you and redo that job description. So, uh, are you envisioning us adding to the budget that we're considering right now? That was my hope. <laughs> that would be the ideal world in my ideal world. <laughs> and I know, you know, I know it's a commitment, and I know, you know, I I think Dana has some concerns about the the work, but I mean, just communication. I mean, I, I was talking to Jacob at at the ACCD, the one that we, you know, we have to work with on the grant, and you know, he said oftentimes communication outreach gets lost because it's a small town, you know, small staff, um, a lot of volunteers, and he said this. This type of a position is really good at picking up those types of activities, um, and he really thought that the sixty thousand um, dollar salary was very, very in line with the type with that position at both at the state level um, and at the regional commission level, regional planning commission level. So, um, I think. I think the idea is a really good one. I'll just tell you where where I am. I think it's something that um, maybe you could get a soft entry to, like maybe have someone part-time for a while um, and move into it. Because I think we're looking at about $90,000 with benefits. And I'm just using the worst case yeah. scenario. Um, which is, what, what concerns me is we don't have the designation. I think we're going to get it. And we're going to have professional help to get it, but um, right. But do you think if we don't have the, just because we don't have the designation, we're not going to have growth? I mean, I don't think that's the case. Um, I think well, we'll have, I think if, if we did not get the designation, let's just say, and there was no new town center, would the person be like what? what promoting? I mean, the only, the only thing that's dependent upon the town center is the TIF. I think the TIF requires that we have a town center designation, but I yes. think the development will happen regardless. I mean, I think there's there's opportunities for. Uh, mm -hmm. the, I mean, the town center designation is desirable because it, it helps us to 
how do I want to say this? Uh, better control the development and the way the development happens mm -hmm. um, because of the, the, the having that official map. But I still think that regardless of whether that happens, there's the potential or, or the we would certainly want to try to continue to look at that and area. And there's certainly a lot of work to do for that to happen because you're in a, you know, you're dealing with a private landowner yes, and you have a yes, lot of negotiation yes. to make and, and you need to really communicate with the board as far as what you're going to be looking for them to do, and um, so I, you know, it's not the position that I'm yeah. just looking at the budget and, right. and thinking how it's going to not be too painful all at once. You know, if we could do a grant like the fire department might get to, for a helper, you know. Well, and I, yeah, I mean, and obviously, I, I don't want to say that the, that this person is going to fund themselves through grant through grant funding, but I do think there's a strong opportunity for the right for the position mm -hmm. to create uh, some of their own funding. Mm -hmm. But you can't; you're never gonna. Well, it yeah. wouldn't be a hundred percent, but yeah, it would be interesting if it was that way. If it could be tied in for the fire department as well, you know, grant funding throughout the town in all respects. That would be another way to look at the beneficial. So, and there's a lot the of logistics that we need to really talk about how it's going to work. You know. Mm -hmm. I hear you. you know. I, I just I just I'm not against wait the a person. Year. I'm I just trying to be year, realistic. You know. I, I hear you. Yeah. I mean, even if it was funded, you know, it could be funded full time, but start in January or something. I mean, I I don't know. I'm just thinking outside the mm -hmm. box. It doesn't necessarily have to be, maybe because who knows how long it would take to even find somebody. I'm, I'm concerned about the idea of it being half time and, and not being able to find an adequate person. I'm concerned with the same thing because if you're offering someone a job, you don't want to say to them six months down the road, sorry we don't have any job for you anymore. Um, no, I'm, I mean, I mean starting somebody, I mean having, you mean if it starts in January? No, I'm just I'm just talking to, to make sure that we're in the position that they can immediately take off running. Yeah. Tom tells me yes, and I don't disagree with him, but <laughs> yes, I'm not, you do. I'm not convinced. <laughs> yes. Obviously, not <laughs> disagree with him. <laughs> um, which, which uh, maybe we need to talk. But right? I do I'm... agree, and and I don't mean to keep talking, but I do agree that the committees need more assistance. The conservation commission could really benefit. I mean, I saw Mrs. Chandler all the time doing a lot of work here as a volunteer, yeah. and wow, I mean. Mm -hmm. it, it, it leverages the volunteer activity if you have somebody that mm -hmm. is, is willing to, to support the, or that can support the committee because, you know, I, I just, we've, we've done so much more since we've had help, and I just think it really leverages those hours that, and makes the, makes People oh, sure. want to participate in the committees more when they feel like they're accomplishing something. Uh, and when you're spinning your wheels, it just doesn't feel, like, you know, yeah. you don't yeah. feel like you're doing anything productive. So I think I think it really right. would make a huge difference with. If so we if we could do that job description, that yep. way I can okay. go to the board and say this is what the proposal is. If I can get you on board, Dana, I know I can get them on board. <laughs> 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 so we'll work on that. <laughs> Oh, amazing. <laughs> Thanks, I'll, guys, I'll for listening that. to me again. No worries. Thanks for Thank all you your coming efforts. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. You're welcome. Okay, uh, the bid opening for the 2019 town reports. Yes, we have four bidders. And if you'd like to take your dance card, if you'd like to see that. Okay. Actually, shall I give one to each of you? Yeah, I think that'll work. Oh, I like presents. Thank you. And you need something to open it. I've got some scissors. We're going to uh, print our town report. Okay. I got scissors. Okay, good. I have some in my pocket too.
I thought it was going to be smaller too. We might want to consider something like this in the future. Yeah, that's kind of nice. Oh, and that is a that's a good point because we're not. This is the first year we will not have the school. This will be a, just a single report. So, are, are, are we really going to have 140 pages? I think so. Last year we did. Okay. So, so, so we will have it's, the school so will be part of this. No, no. Last no. year the book had over 200 pages. We had I, like 230 pages or something. Okay. Yeah. Half the size of the Yeah. Mm -hmm. Half the size. Yeah. Solutions. Oh, that's that's the one you have. So if you want to I have select solutions. Okay. Do you want to just tell what the? So the cost to print the 2019 Berlin Town Report is $1,873 delivered. This price was based on all the requested spe specific <coughs> specifications. Specifications. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. Enclosed is the Nottingham book we printed this year and also we printed in 2011, 2012, 2000, and 2014. Berlin Town Reports, thank you for the opportunity to provide a pr proposal. And they are in North Brookfield, Mass. I forgot to put the address here, but they're in North yeah, Brookfield, Mass. Yeah, North Brookfield, Mass. Mass. Service accurate printing. Um, they have a bid here in the in the amount of two thousand one hundred and ninety nine dollars. They included copies of a, a smallish copy of the Middlesex Town Plan or Town Report, uh, Randolph Vermont Town Report, Spiral Bound, and then we have a stapled uh, Town of Chelsea. Mm. And, and they have done they're in Berlin and they have done our reports before. Uh, this one is recall, and um, for 600 copies, they are at $1,590. Did you say 1590 Yep. And if we do a two-year thing with them for, for 2019 and 2000. 2020, <clears throat> it would be $1,520 for each year. Uh, Have they done any hours before? Yes, they've they lab, they've done it the last um, last year. They did last it, year? and I think they did it not the previous year, but the year Three previous to that. that. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so one That's that's, yeah. that's for 2019, but they do the 2019 and the 2020. It'll be 15, 20 for the, each year. And I have R.C. Bradshaw and Company, and they said a finished size eight and a half by 11, 140 pages, 70 sheets, printed double sided with black, text on 20 pound white. Cover printed four to one color over black on eight points. C1S cover perfect bound. Delivery via their company. Quantity 600 for $1,971. And they included the town report for town of Killington, Hancock, New Hampshire, town of Hopkinton, town of Boscowan, New Hampshire, and the 2018 annual report for Piermont, New Hampshire. And they are located on 11 Commerce Avenue in West Lebanon, New Hampshire. So I would say the repo is a pretty good price. They're the lowest one. And if we go with the two years, which I think is still, they've consistently been, if not the lowest, they've been within $50 of the lowest price. So I think it probably makes sense then to go with the, the two-year bid. 
Well, it takes and gives you an idea of what it's going to cost the next year, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. They're saying for both years it would be $15.20? They'll do a cost rate of $70 per year for doing the two and, years. And it locks in, so if prices go up, we right. don't get saddled with those increases. And there was nobody, I mean, there's not really anybody even terribly close. No. So I'm going to move that we uh, accept the bid from Repro of Winooski for two years at $1,520 per year. I second that motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Appointment of Tour Nelson for alternate member, DRB. The Tour has expressed interest in serving as an alternate member of the DRB. I did not ask him to come in because I thought you knew him. Move to appoint Tour Nelson as an alternate to the DRB. I second the motion. Any further discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, proposal for cemetery survey, Dana? Yeah. I could have you sign tours appointment. Appreciate it. Um, we had talked a little bit, and I know I've talked to Jeremy, about a gentleman down on Junction Road who is interested in donating a piece of property to the town to um, add to the Colby Cemetery, um, which is a I don't. It's an old cemetery that is no longer. Yep. People are no longer interred there, but it's um, located right off of. Uh, well, they're still interred, but <laughs> they're, they're not newly interred. New, new, not no newly new interred. Yeah, <laughs> they haven't gone anywhere. Yeah. Um, they're staying put. It's really quite a nice cemetery, actually, but it's right off of um, Junction Road. The gentleman um, who is willing to donate a little bit of property um, is willing to give it to the town. And but obviously, and it would be done as a um, property line adjustment, so it wouldn't have to go through a formal subdivision. Um, the they do need a survey done, which um, he is asking the town to pay for, and the estimate for that is three thousand fifty dollars. How many um, acres is that? It's uh, the the amount of acres that he wants to yeah. that he wants to give. Um, that's a very good question. I think that's part of the survey, but I wouldn't call it more than certainly an acre at the most. Basically, it's the straight you know the cemetery. It's yeah, a straight the line. It curves right around. around. A, the cemetery is on like a little and, knoll. Yeah, and also to bring the line right to Junction Road, whereas right now it's not. It's, yeah. So, um, so, so what you're saying is that what he's uh, quoting here for the wastewater design and permitting, we are certain that it's not going to require that um, that extra step that he mentions, because it's more than thirty fifty. If that's the case, um, have we run it by our? We haven't done any of that. Uh, this is this is right out of the. Um, to answer your question, Jeremy, no, I'm not certain now that I read it. Okay. Um, because he's talking about less than five hundred feet. And, but I think Tom has assured me it doesn't require a subdivision, so I don't believe we're going to need a wastewater permit. Which seems kind of ridiculous for a cemetery bus. Well, the, I mean, the en engineer or the uh, project manager here is suggesting that we probably do. So, I mean, I'm certainly going to trust Tom that he knows his zoning stuff and development and whatnot. Um, well, I guess I could clarify that. And to... Well, well, well I mean, we could certainly we could certainly approve the, the first bit, I mean, but... Or we could approve, it, approve the first bit and then conditionally approve the second if it's necessary. I mean, it sounds like... So really, and it's another $1,500. We, we don't want to spend it, of course, if we don't have to. 
I think the whole the whole question is, is it beneficial in the amount of three thousand fifty dollars to acquire this piece of property for the town, um, for that cemetery? And also, I have not put this out to bid. This is the only I see. quote I have. Okay. So I mean, that might be something we could think of as well. Um, so I guess I'm asking for the board's advice. And then, as far as funds. This, there are some cemetery funds mm -hmm. that I would ask the cemetery committee if I could, and the board, if I could access those. I think someone putting it up to bid might be a good thing. You know, I thought so as well. Um, but do we want to move forward with it? It doesn't seem ridiculous to just shy of an acre for some. Well, I'm just trying to think that what he's trying to, as I understand, what Mr. Slayton's trying to do is just straighten up his boundary line. I think he is planning his estate, uh, and he's doing some estate planning, and it's more that he would like to see the town have it for the cemetery and have the cemetery a straight lot. I don't think it's, he's concerned about his line so much. Although I shouldn't speak for him. I think we should go forward with that bidding. I do too. Okay. Yeah. Hey, we're at the bid. I want a motion for it. So I, uh, I move that you put the. Um, survey and mapping for that boundary adjustment, potentially subdivision permitting uh, out to bid. And a second motion. All those, uh, any further discussion? On that, Dana, um, I think it's better off to have Rob look into the, whether or not it's going to need the Wastewater. I, don't, I, I certainly would do that. Mm -hmm. yes. I'm not, I'm yeah. Not feeling, I'm not feeling it. Well, I mean, you know, and no I, I to don't. Tom, I don't. Be good to I do believe that. Tom. However, right. I would. I would obviously run this through. Rob. Yeah. Right. Um, and I got the. I had them give me this figure. I had no idea what it would cost to survey a, a little piece of property. And when I saw the cost, I said, "Wow." Yeah. But when I think of it, I suppose that's not. Unusual. <coughs> okay. Any other discussion on this? If not, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, let's see where. Okay, updated municipal sewer ordinance. Yes, yeah, so I'd like to give you that ordinance. Um, it's been approved by the town attorney. It's been approved by the public works board. Um, and the next step would be for this board to update the existing ordinance. So if you'd like to just take one and pass it down, please. Um, and I was thinking maybe of bringing it back in January. I've asked Tom to give us a, a synopsis of exactly what changed in there, um, so that you know. Again, an ordinance like this would require, require the select board to vote on, and it would be a 60-day period to take effect. There are some changes in how they figure the some of the charges for items in here that you might be aware of. How, how Berlin charges right. residents who hook up. Things like that, yes, okay. exactly. So this is, they, Tom's been working on this for a little while and the Public Works Board has, and so now they're recommending that the board go forward with it. Anything else on that, David? No. No. That's, and I just got that, so. Um, approval of select board minutes for November 21st and November 26th. 
move that we approve the minutes for the Thursday, November 1st, 2019, and the um, November 21st. Thank you. Tuesday, yeah. November 26th, 2019, select board meeting minutes as presented. And I second the motion. Okay. Any further discussion on this? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Can we all hear for these? I think I think you were. So? Yeah. I think you were. Even for the Tuesday? Um I was I was here. You were here and mm -hmm. Flo was here and so were you, Brad. So okay. yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just want to make sure. So we have more abstention? Yes. Yeah. No, were you here when we appointed the, the police officers last yeah, Angelina was not here. Okay, okay so last two months, yeah. yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries with one abstention. For the two thousand uh, for the for the twenty sixth, isn't it? You were here yeah. for the twenty first. She was there the twenty first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um Brad our minute taker is very thorough, and she asked me a question. Oh yeah, <laughs> do me up, do me up. <laughs> and I and she asked me a question that I thought was interesting, and um, Robert's rules of order, um, and she asked if the chair voted. In ma in many cases, the chair only votes when there's a tie, and or to make a tie, or to or to or to make a tie. Um, and I don't know. I always thought you voted. Um, and we're also not obliged to follow Robert's rules exactly. I mean, the, the way we do our discussions here is different. Yeah. I guess I was trying to understand, because what her question was, was when she, if, when she, because she saw that we changed the number of the last, you know, Justin yeah. brought up about the, about, yeah. The Robert's rule states that, um, Believe me, I was lectured for this. <laughs> I had a feeling you might have heard about it. It states that for board, uh, for boards, 12 members and up, the chair does not vote. Mm. For 12 members and down, it's the chair's choice, basically. Yeah. So I leave it up to the board. If they if they want me to vote, that's fine. I guess that's what I'm asking, because that person I mean, also I'll think about consensus. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, so like the CV Fiber Board, there's 18 people on that board, and I chair that. But our rules of procedure allow me to make motions, and and I vote explicitly with that. So it just it just depends on what the board wants yeah. to do. So, um, yeah, I would. I mean, I would think you would you would vote, or if you if you don't, that we're just going to assume you're going to go with the majority. With the majority, I mean, that's that's. I was under the impression really you've always voted, but yeah. yeah. You know. So I think we can just assume that you cast your vote with the majority, unless you say otherwise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's how I've always interpreted it. Okay. The way I understand, the way I, when I read Robert's rules years ago, the, uh, what, yeah, I know, <laughs> Mabel's got a lot it, it's, it's fascinating, too. I um, like how it comes out. The, uh, <laughs> the, the, the base of the chair is, I, I tend to stay out of the arguments as much as I can because I don't think it's right for the chair to get uh, mm -hmm. too involved because you lose some of your objectivity. I, at least that's my feeling. Um, the rest of it is, um, uh, the rest of it is, uh, you know, Robert's rules is just a way to take and make sure everybody has their say. Sure. Yeah. I'd like to think I do that. <laughs> well, I appreciate the guidance because I'm going to speak with our um, minute taker because I told her I would find out. Yeah. So I would, I would, uh -huh. I would say, you know, whatever the board wants me to do is fine. I'd be fine with that. Yeah, I, I think we just go go forward like we have in the past and just assume that you're going with the, the majority unless you say otherwise. So we just make sure we don't correct her on her. <laughs> well, 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 no. So, I mean, she'll know. <laughs> so, so, I mean, so, but otherwise, because it would, on that motion that we talked about, it would, it would have been a 2 1. So we had to, I mean, it, we, I mean, if we assume that you were voting with the majority, then it would, then it would be 3 1. Yeah. yeah, and that's what brought it up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But Thank but you. but a, but a two one still passes, still has a quorum, yep. even if you're not voting. So. Mm -hmm. 
Anything else on that one, Dana? Thank you. No. I just I <laughs> promised I promised a minute taker I'd find out. It's so grilled. Town Administrator's report, Dana. Um, this week I what I have to report to you is yesterday I did go over to a class on the you remember that Trevor Whipple came in and spoke to yep. you about the uh, ticketing yep. process. And we had kind of expressed interest to Trevor about um, having an additional way to enforce our ordinances and our zoning ordinance specifically, and if it would be more of an incentive if we could issue people tickets. Um, and it is possible and it is a procedure. We do need to rewrite several of our um, ordinances to match what we need to have in there in order for this to happen. Um, I'm not so sure whether it will make a huge difference in the zoning because zoning goes to the environmental court rather than yep. just basically the judicial court. Um, but I think that, and I'll have more information for you, but I think that we do need to start going through and putting in the wording that's needed in our existing ordinance, which means we're going to have to amend several ordinances. Would violations of the sewer ordinance also go to environmental court? Um, yes, I would imagine, yeah. So this would allow us to... It would allow, it would, it would give you the legal right to, uh, and you would designate who is the ticket writer. Now, a law enforcement officer is automatically designated by the state, but as far as zoning violations, it could be me, it could be Tom. Um, or whoever else, it could be you if you designate yourself um, to write, you know, to write the tickets. And I don't anticipate, I, this is not a revenue stream at all. This is, this is just to have fairness throughout the town, maybe. It also catches people's attention. It catches people's attention. And realistically, many times the people that you're going to be writing tickets to do not have resources to pay you. And you're going to have to have a mechanism of what you're going to do mm -hmm. about that. Because I've, I, I think of it as like small claims court. Where sure. I used to work, the policy was to take people to small claims court for things. And nine times out of ten, you spend all this money to get into the court and have the sheriff deliver the, the paperwork. And you'd get there and they'd have no money. And I, I've been there, I understand it. Um, and the judge would say to you, well, they have no money, so see you later. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway. That was it? That's it. Okay, round table. Flo? Nothing. Jeremy? I'm good. Angelina? No. Uh, executive session data? No, not tonight. Woohoo! Move to adjourn. Second the motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 Ha <laughs>